In exercise 9, you're going to be using a stereo microscope. A stereo microscope is different than a compound microscope, and sometimes it's called a dissecting microscope. You're going to apply terminology to observations of microbial growth on your environmental plate that you saved from the previous lab. The stereo microscope looks like this. Ours may look slightly different, but the operation is pretty much the same. Unlike a compound microscope, the lighting in a stereo microscope uses reflected illumination rather than transmitted illumination. So we can look at very thick uh, images here. For example, we could look at a penny. You can look at your fingernail uh, because the light is going to be reflected from the specimen instead of having to go through, we get a nice 3D image. The 3D image is, net, is going to be achieved by having two eyepieces, so you're going to have to look through both oculars, again adjusting the intrapupillary distance by moving these oculars closer together or further apart. The magnifications that we get from a stereo microscope will be lower than what we get from a compound microscope. I believe in these we get about 450x. The result is a three-dimensional image. The microscopes don't have objectives. The magnification is changed by a knob on the top. There's also a focus knob on the side of the microscope. And there are two light settings. One light setting is going to be incident light, light that comes down from the top and bounces off of the uh, specimen. The other light is going to come through the bottom. First, you're going to observe the broth that you prepared from the environmental sample. You will not be using the microscope to do this. Very carefully lift the broth out of the rack and observe the turbidity. Turbidity is cloudiness. Also, look at the bottom of the tube for sediment. You're going to recur record the turbidity. Perhaps you may not see any turbidity in the tube, but you may see sediment. You might see a great deal of cloudiness. You might even see cloudiness to the point that there are chunks floating around in the tube. This is referred to as flocculent growth. Then we're going to tip the tube just ever so slightly to look for surface growth. If you see very thin growth on the surface, this is referred to as a membrane. This membrane very often breaks off and starts to sink down into the medium, and this is why we have to carefully hold and lift these broths. If you see a very thick growth on the top, we refer to this as a pellicle. Then you're going to use the microscope in order to observe the stroke slant. You're going to lay the, the stroke slant on the uh, base of the microscope and focus up and down with the focus knob. Make sure you hold the tube at all times so it doesn't roll off the microscope. Some of the patterns that you are likely to see will be a straight line, which is called filiform. I like to think of it as a nail file. So nail files are straight on the sides and they make a smoothness to your nails. So that helps me to remember filiform like nail file. Arborescent is tree-like. Arbor Day is the day we plant trees, so you can remember that arborescent is tree-like. Beaded is self-explanatory. Effuse means spreading and thin. Rhizoid is like roots. Root, rhizoids are roots. And echinulate is spiny. Echine rhymes with spine, so I can remember that echinulate looks like the spine. You may see a combination of patterns. For example, you might find it to be beaded at the base of the stroke and filiform at the top. Then you're going to take a look at the environmental plate that you have saved from the previous week. You're going to use the stereo microscope with various magnification to observe up to six different colonies. You want to record these on your lab report sheet, comparing it to the descriptions in the lab manual. The first thing you want to look at is the colony in its entirety. We call that the configuration. A circular colony is quite common. A circular configuration, if it's bumpy on the edges, it's irregular, for example. Then we're going to increase the magnification and take a look at just the edge of the colony. We call this the margin. The margin might be filamentous, it might be wavy, which is lobate, 
it might be entire, which is smooth. Finally, we're going to make note of the elevation. You may not be able to detect the elevation using the stereo microscope. You may need to actually use your eye and view it from the side without the microscope. We have a variety of different elevations, raised being a little lower than convex. Convex is more drop light, flat, it's very close to the surface. Umbinate is like an Audi belly button, where crateriform is like an innie belly button. See you in lab.